All right, squad. Hi, welcome to tonight's call. I'm excited to be here. I was just telling Mark, I was like, I'm a bit sad tonight. And it's just the full scope of fucking human emotion, isn't it? I was listening to this song and it just triggered a lot of things. And that that's actually one of the reasons why I always say trade with no music that has lyrics on it. Because this one song that I sent Mike last week, I was like head banging to in the car, ready to like take on the world. And then I play it tonight and I want to curl up on a ball and cry. <laughs> So this is why I always say don't listen to songs when trading that have lyrics because they can provoke interesting responses in you. Or memories attached to them. Yeah. Yeah. So binaural beats all the way. <laughs> so There's certain songs that I just cannot listen. Like, well, depending on the, like, depending on whatever circumstance, but there is definitely like, uh, certain like i think that's cool about music is that music in particular i mean like watching a certain movie can trigger like a certain memory or stuff like that but i think music in particular it really can bring you back to good or bad times yeah yeah agreed like the never-ending story (laughs) that'll get Mm. you hopefully everyone's seen that now two um topics tonight and i'm not going to share you with them we're just going to roll into it because they're quite conversational based so i've just got the exact kind of topic question on my phone next to me but one thing i want to speak to um is the topic of like how to learn this type of information and how to learn trading effectively because i think as much as we can say trading is any other skill to learn remembering is also a whole other skill to learn like remembering okay and if you want to get better at it it you know you you must practice consistency so tell me if this sounds familiar and rock said a little bit of it last week you know say um you read a book it fucking speaks to your soul you highlight every paragraph and you wonder how you ever existed or lived before you found this information And then a couple of days later, a couple of weeks later, you just completely, you know, have trouble recalling what you read. Um, And, you know, Rock said it perfectly last week, like who here has read a book, you know, 10 pages of a book. And then you put the book down and you can't even remember what you read. You're like, what did I just read? Like drop a one in the chat if that's all familiar for you. We're all going twos tonight. Twos. All right. We can do twos. (laughs) Whatever one you want. Any number. Okay. So this is what I would like to call tonight the illusion of confidence, okay? The illusion of Mm. confidence. So in in, uh, in, in I am especially, there's- Did you say confidence or competence? Competence, C-O-M-P. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah. Yep. Um, The illusion of confidence, right? So, you know, we've got all this information at our fingertips. It's, It's so easy to feel like we know what we're doing. It's so easy to feel like, we're informed, but there's a really big difference between truly understanding something and and then feeling like we do. Okay. And this feeling like we do is what we call this illusion of confidence. Okay. So why don't we remember what we learn? Okay. And if we think about how we're taught the principles of learning in school, we're not really taught how to learn. Okay. We're taught what to learn, but we're not taught how to learn. So think about it in school, you're taught, you know, cram this information, study, study, study. We've got an exam on Friday. Okay. Or exam week. Right. Um, So there's a few things that can really hinder our ability to learn and retain information. And that can be, you know, anything from, we get really bogged down in the details you know, maybe your learning type is you have to know everything about everything before you can possibly move on to the next thing. Um, secondly, maybe you just don't spend enough time with it. Uh, thirdly, you, you, you're you not actively using it. So maybe like if you're going through bounce back or you're getting on the go lives, are you going back to the charts and applying what it is that you're learning? Okay, trading is a practical thing. If you're not applying it, of course, you're not going to understand it and learn it. Okay. Um, and the other thing would be, maybe the information that you're trying to learn is not relevant right now. Okay, so maybe you don't think it's important because I don't need that right now. So it's not relevant. Okay, so one question that I like to ask myself when I'm learning something new and I'm studying 
um, and this could even be applied to bounce back and go lives, okay, is once I've watched something, the question I ask is, what is the main idea being communicated here? And I'll write that in the chat. What is the main idea that is being communicated here? So this can be, so if you're going through bounce back and you've watched liquidity, the question you want to ask yourself is, what is the main idea being communicated here? Structure, what is the main idea that is being communicated here? Okay, because what I personally love to do is I really love to quiz myself. And one of the biggest errors that you can make um, is to passively consume all this information without actually engaging with it. So let's take this back to say the beginnings uh, you know, in, in the academy, the basics of Forex you know, in the academy. And the reason I wanna go back there is because every single person wants to rush through the basics. Okay, I'll tell you, you know, 100, 200 series, it takes what, two and a half hours to get through. Okay, everyone wants to rush through that and get to the cool part of trading where that's fucking making money. Okay, without first having an understanding of the basics. Okay, so who here can actually say they understand what is happening when you enter a buy or when you enter a sell? Like be straight up honest in the chat. Can you say, do I know what's happening when I'm going in for a buy? Do I know what's happening when I'm selling? Okay, who here fully understands the anatomy of candlesticks, of market structure, of liquidity, mitigation, right? If you can't verbally answer those questions, you don't know it. You don't know it, guys. And I'm not throwing shade at you. I'm just trying to make you guys effective learners. Okay, so if you can't answer those questions, oh, SJ, it's a la la la, then you don't know it. Okay, so when you come across something new um, that you're trying to learn, instead of just consuming it and moving on to, you know, watching a video, then moving on to the next one, I want you to close the book that you're reading. I want you to pause the video that you're watching. And I want you to try and recall what it is that you just learned and write it down in your own words. Okay, so the point here is to practice recalling it on your own without the material that you were just consuming. Okay, and, you know, this is all about strengthening those neural connections. Consuming information one time doesn't cut it. Okay, it's like thinking you can watch bounce back one time and you're going to be a trader. It's like thinking you can go to the gym one time and achieve your, and achieve your dream body. It doesn't work like that. It just simply doesn't, okay? I know students who have done bounce back multiple times. And when it first came out, guys, I did it six times. I've done bounce back six times. Okay, so it really comes down to, you know, I'm, I'm also big on um, only read it if you need it. And maybe fucking write that down. Only read it if you need it. Because sometimes, especially in, in, in IM, there's a million different traders, a million different strategies. And it can be easy to think of, oh, I might go over and do this one now. I might go over and do this one now. Like who here have, you know, hopped from HFX to, to whatever, to this, to this other new fucking impulse thing. I don't know what anything IM does apart from like smart money. <laughs> I do not have a single clue, but I do know people hop from this, hop from that, hop from this, and they wonder why they're not progressing. They wonder why, okay? So my motto is only read it if you need it because the point here is that the information that you're consuming, it needs to be relevant to stick, okay? So a good rule of thumb here is to not, is, is to seek out information in order to solve an immediate problem or to answer a specific question, okay? So only read it if, you're ne if you need it. Mikey, what is your tips on helping people become effective learners so they're actually retaining information? I think that's a really, really good question. I don't think you've ever phrased a, a question like that because, uh, well, at least with, with me or at any other point that I've ever heard it because that is very important. In public education, when people would study for a test, they would take the test and then immediately regress all of the information. And I think that that behavior, 
um, of course, is is learn at, at, at those times, and then we replicate it. And when it comes like to this, I think a lot of people might be in their the impression that oh, I just need to learn the basics so I cannot really ever think about them again, and and move on to the quote unquote more advanced things, and that that is what I need to be focused on. But if you ever listen to athletes uh, like the highest of their field or even musicians, what and and if there is ever a uh, an issue or a problem or something, you'll always hear the greats say the same thing: fall back to the basics, fall back to the root uh, to the rudimentary. And I think the secret of that is because. Nobody or, or not nobody, uh, everybody else is like, let's use basketball as an example. Instead of worrying about the, getting the fundamentals or the basic principles, it's about, oh, I need to cross this person up or I need to look, you know, I need to do something intricate and something tricky and something, uh, you know, just over complicating everything. And uh Again, you hear time and time again to go back to the basics. And I think that it's interesting because people and and again, including myself, like people in general, all of us, um, it's almost as if we just go through academies or training of some sort just to feel like that part is done and that the next chapter. And that there's a next chapter and that there's this next chapter. And at the end of the book, so to speak, that that is what all of us are trying to get to. Just like what you were saying, SJ, of speeding through that part, that process, because we feel, oh, this is, you know, it is important, but it is not the most important things. Well, honestly, when you get into the really not like advanced conversations of trading, but the uh the further down the process, like which brokers should you really start being on? What kind of rules of uh, first in, first out, or with spread, or dealing desk brokers, or this, or like the nitty gritty kind of details that you don't really bother bringing up with new people because, again, it's not relevant. Um, that's not, of course, the solutions to things. And Again, what is the, you know, the typical normal solution to most problems is falling back to the basics. Of course, like in trading, it would be risk management. It would be num or number management, emotional discipline. It would be, again, having the uh, consistency to follow that plan. But how SJ framed the question of what it would take, what it take to, to be let's put it a professional learner in my opinion is and and even with that you know before i get to that sj was saying that if the information is not relevant necessarily well i would go even a step further and say if it is not understood by the brain what the point of the information is if we cannot understand why we you know need to not only go through the information and but consistent consistently apply it the brain will drop it and so that's again where all of the problems and everything start coming from and so not that again it's not just irrelevant information but even if it is incredibly relevant information which should be you know the case of course uh why is it that it is so easy to step away from the the typical normal things that I always, of course, bring up to people of, again, asking this question, if you guys have been trading and well, let me just ask you this way. When you guys are trading, like, let's say this week so far or last week, did you do things that you weren't supposed to do? Did you over leverage? Did you revenge trade? Did you babysit? Did you do something that you know you were not supposed to do? It's not about uh, criticizing you or anything like that, but it is about recognizing that when those things are occurring, it is not again the fact that we do them because we just want to break the rules. It's that, in my opinion, the brain doesn't understand why the rules are there. And if we can't understand why the rules are there, then the brain's like, why am I even following this? 
remember the brain, the way I like to phrase it is that the brain is like a four year old little child that we are in the passenger seat next to, or we are in the driver's seat. And the four year old is the greedy one, the addicted one, the one that wants all the vices, the one that always wants to feel good, the one that doesn't want to sacrifice anything, the one that, you know, wants to eat whatever it wants, you know, whatever it wants, the one that wants to, you, you, you guys know what I'm talking about. When that when that version of us is in the driver's seat, if again that version of us does not understand the purpose of the learning of the education and not just again going through it but applying it, I think what you dinged on SJ that I really liked, and in fact, like that it, it really kind of just blew my mind a little bit about it is that people have like it's almost like this idea of. I just need to go through the education because it is a, a, uh, not a requirement, but a, um, what's, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word. Like a, it, it's almost like a rite of passage that we all feel that we need to do, but maybe not understanding why they are the basics. We just understand they're the basics. And that word, that meta, you know, that 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 terminology, the basics, like, oh, okay, we'll just get through that real quick, and then just all, off we go. That kind of formality of that is what I think she's dinging on right there, because it is so quintessential. There's there's a reason why it's the basics or the foundation, and without it, the entire house falls apart. And if you guys have been on my session uh, before, uh. If you have you guys seen, is there anybody in fact in here that has seen my charts and you don't know what all of those lines on my chart are, the purple, blue and green lines, or you might think that they are like support resistance or supply and demand levels, because, of course, if people, especially like for the first time, come into my session and just see all of those lines they of course don't know. So they of course will come to a conclusion of their own. But the reality is, is that those lines that you guys see on my charts, it has nothing to do with technical analysis, the entire approach or foundational understanding. And this, I want to use this example because it really, again, hones in on what we're talking about here. The entire approach to technical analysis that we have been taught is looking to the left at the history, at the candles, equal highs, equal lows, this or that, where's the monthly high, where's this, where's that? And that from that stuff, we then come to where price action currently is, right? That, however, that is determined, it doesn't matter. That is all considered technical analysis, right? Well, the grid or quarters that is on my charts, it has nothing to do with technical analysis. I call it the grid because it is quite literally the grid that the candles participate on, the board, the, the game, the board game, and where the game that we are all playing, where it participates. And so to me, it is, con in my opinion, which of course it's like, you know, I have a <laughs> an hour long you know, discussion over why I feel it's this way. But to me, that is such a quintessential foundational understanding of price action, because it doesn't matter why you have determined if you're, you know, smart money or if, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. It is all participating on the grid, the equal horizontal and vertical lines. That is the grid. You, you guys, you know, like the checkerboard. That is not coming from a technical analysis standpoint. All technical analysis is happening on that grid. Do you guys see what I'm saying? That and that that's what I always try to impart with people when I'm discussing the grid. It is not a trading strategy to me. It, 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 it's not theory. That is what the algorithms participate on. If gold hits 1800 USD, 1800 specifically, that is going to be talked about or 1700 or, you know, whatever that is going to be discussed in the news. There's going to be articles written about it. There's going to be conversations about it on Bloomberg, on TV, blah, 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 whatever. Why? Well, uh, you know, if you guys don't know or have never heard me say it before, why is um, 
you know, like even pop quiz. Sorry, SJ, I'm kind of going off here, but I uh, hope it's okay. Why, guys, uh, is 1800 on gold, just as an example, or I could use bi- uh, 20K on Bitcoin. Why is 20K on Bitcoin or 1800 on gold or 110 on USDJPY? Why are those prices more relevant than all of the price levels, all of the very specific numbers that surround it? If you guys know the answer, tell me. But if you don't know or if you've never heard me explain it before, take a shot in the chat. Do you guys know, like, when you're looking at my charts, those purple lines, those purple lines are large quarters. But more specifically, what is considered major points, like as an example, 1,800 on gold or 1,700 or 1,600 or 1,500 or 110 on UJ or 100 or 120 or 130. Or Bitcoin, Bit, uh, Bitcoin, twenty k, thirty k. It is for the exact same reason of why is it more relevant in life when a nineteen year old becomes a twenty year old? Why is that more relevant than when a fourteen year old becomes a fifteen year old, or when a twelve year old becomes a thirteen year old? Why are, why is it more relevant in human society when we are in the year? 2009 and go into the year 2010, as opposed from going to 2011 to 2012. We as human beings and from the baseline level of how we have created everything, and of course, that includes the algorithms and the trading that we all participate on, 1800 is the difference between the 1800s and the 1700s. It's like, do you guys understand that? The, the 1800 on gold, that is the very specific number that separates the 1700s from the 1800s. Just as much as like the year 2020 separates the 20s from the teens. That distinction. You see what I'm saying? That has nothing to do with technical analysis. That is just how human beings use math. It's called the base 10 number system or the decimal system. And that applies everywhere. That to me, and coming back finally full swing to what this entire conversation started with, it is a foundation. It is a basic to me. It is something that if it is forgotten, we can easily look at charts and look at price action and say, why is this all happening? Or, you know, not understand why certain things may be happening. And again, in my opinion, the understanding of the grid, because it's not just price levels, it's also time. Time is the vertical lines of the grid. Price is horizontal. And uh, and that's, of course, how it works. But it is, again, such a foundational principle of trading. And again, where do you guys think when the liquidity providers when they're putting when the algorithms are putting in orders just like another question that SJ said if you don't really know what that means or what is happening the algorithms of the computers the machines or ai or whatever word you want to use they are actively setting positions right they are driving price one way or the other right that is happening with numbers that is happening with wherever the price of the market is currently to wherever they will set uh, liquidity and where, you know, of course, like where imbalances occur or where the price is going to ultimately go, the price is going to go to wherever the money is sitting, wherever the most is, that's just how it works. And wherever that is happening is represented by numbers or parameters that are set. Those are all abiding by the numeric principles of the grid. But again, to bring this back to full swing, that's an example of how or why not only just, again, like the grid or quarters of you know, everything I was just talking about, but again, understanding the basics or the principles to such a deeper level and never letting them go. It's about understanding why. Why are these things important? If we don't think that these things are important, or we do not put a internal mental value on them, you'll forget. You'll forget the video thirty minutes after you watched it. You'll watch the video on liquidity and be like, 
wait, what's liquidity? You could watch it three more times and still not have any of that mental value that we see upon ourselves and still not understand it. So in my opinion, again, it's about uh, understanding what the value of it is. What is what is the objective? Just like SJ said, what is what is the point? What is the value or what is the you know the the point of the education? What is it that we're trying to learn? The main idea exactly. What is the main idea? And again, if you do not understand why, you're just going through the motions of just oh, next video, next video, next video, next video. That's not going to serve you. It's not going to help because it's just the next thing to the next thing to the next thing. Your brain. It, it doesn't work that way. Exactly. It doesn't work that way, which is why the repetition, you know, rem remembering is a skill in itself. So the the whole point there is, you know, what is the main idea being communicated here, guys? That is just a, a simple statement question that you can ask yourself after each video. So you do start to retain information. Now, in saying that, though, um, bounce back is one of those things where it's like it is just subject 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 and then as you're going through it you're probably thinking how the fuck does this all come together just trust that it does all come together but just like what mike is saying you need to know what things are before you can then put it all together okay are we do we have a full understanding of that do we have any other other questions um patty's got a full stop <laughs> i don't know what that means um, the next thing I wanted to speak to is a common theme that I see happening with many traders is when they get started, they hit the ground running, they love it, they love the idea of what it can do for them, um, and they're all motivated at the beginning, and then, you know, a, a couple, you know, a month or two later, three months later, maybe even after a losing streak, you start fizzling off, and then you get, you know, Mike and I, or even, even Leon will get asked with the question, how do you stay motivated? Now, we've answered this in, in many ways. And I'm, I'm wondering, the reason why I'm bringing this up again is because the fact that it keeps getting answered, there's something that Mike and I are not saying, okay? So the first thing I want to get straight is you don't lack motivation, okay? Nobody does. And the reason I'm so confident about saying that is because we need to think about what motivation actually is. And if we think about the definition of it, it's, defi it's defined as, you know, a desire to do something or act in a certain way. Okay, that's it. And then what follows is that you're then always motivated to act in certain ways because you're always doing something. Okay, and that even if that something is sitting on the couch and binge watching all of Game of Thrones for fucking a week straight eating ice cream on the couch. OK, there's still motivating factors behind that action or the inaction that you're doing. OK, in, 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 in this in that example, you know, the motivating factor would be a pleasurable experience gained by a really cool show, nice visuals, as well as, you know, ice cream, um, which is all of that together is just a massive dopamine rush. OK, now, obviously, that's not what you know, in terms of like an example, maybe not the most relevant because that's not what we talk about when we think about motivation. But when we say we we lack motivation, what we really mean is that we lack the motivation to do the things that we should be doing, okay? And the things that I, I thought about this that I was just like, what are the things that we should be doing? And as far as I can see, it falls into two categories, okay? We've got one, the responsibility we have to others. So maybe you're a parent, spouse, whatever, you got bills to pay, okay? But then you have the responsibility to yourself, like what career you should pursue, when you should exercise, um, what you should eat, marking up charts, getting on the go lives, journaling, okay, all of those things. So when we think about what truly motivates us, you know, Tony Robbins says it all the time, that humans are generally motivated by two things, the desire to gain pleasure or the need to avoid pain, okay? And the need to avoid pain is usually more powerful okay now for example of this is most of us don't really have a big problem finding the motivation to hold responsibilities to others okay like say you're a parent you're going to go fucking pick your, your kid up from school because you know that if you don't they're going to be stranded <laughs> okay so you've got that responsibility to others um say you've got to pay your bills 
obviously if you don't pay your bills then the uncomfortable scenario there would be you would be left without electricity and hot water and running water okay so these two examples right there have an important um similarity or commonality okay there it and what that is it's the consequences of not acting okay therefore you know you're not acting therefore that you know this is motivation in its purest form there's a consequence for that so I want you guys to take a moment and think of a couple of things like this in your own life and you'll realize that you already know what it feels like to be motivated so to ask the question how do you stay motivated guys you've already got that you already got that okay so, so so I guess the question then is why is it so hard to find the motivation to uphold responsibilities that we have to ourselves? Okay, why is it so much more challenging to pursue something that we like, okay, or something that we love than it is to, you know, pay our bills on time, right? And the big reason for that is, you know, a big reason for why, why we don't do the things we say we want to do is because we act, maybe we haven't even considered the consequence of inaction. You all know why you started trading. But have you thought about the consequence of not seeing it through? Right? Have you thought about that? Okay, and this is why so many people stay stuck in jobs that they don't really love rather than pursuing something that they do, why they wake up feeling shitty because their health is not a priority because they're not sticking to exercise and, and, and diet, right? They've got all these other health problems. Okay, so many people fail to take into account the pain caused by their inaction. So if, you, if you're asking the question, SJ, Mike, Leon, how do you stay motivated? Or I lost a bit of motivation and I'm doing this instead. You're disconnected or, or you haven't considered the pain caused by that, in, that inaction, okay? And you know, maybe it's a, also a case of you don't, it's kind of maybe a slow burn and these consequences are not immediate, okay, rather than the effects of something, you know, that would be immediate. Like if you don't pay your power bill, then you're going to get your fucking power cut off, okay? That's an immediate consequence, okay? So the reason for the lack of motivation is probably because we don't link enough pain to our inaction. So the way to fix a lack of motivation in any area of life is to force yourself to see the consequences of your inaction, right? When you take the time to deliberately contemplate the negative effects of you not doing what you say you want to do, okay, or what you need to do, you link that pain to your inaction. And once you link enough pain to inaction, you fucking find the motivation, trust me. Okay, so think of, like Mike uses a stove analogy all the time. You don't need any motivation to remove your hand from a hot stove, do you? Right? The physical pain of hitting that stove is so fucking great that, that removing your hand is the natural reaction to that situation. Okay, so when it comes to motivating yourself, the idea here is to increase, um, increase the psychological or emotional pain associated with the inaction to the point where you show up every day, you do what needs to be done. You take inspired action towards your goal. Then once you do that enough, it becomes a natural reaction. Okay, so I want you guys to think about what will happen if you don't follow through on what it is that you need or want to do. I want you to contemplate the negative effects of your inaction. So when you then go to message me, <laughs> how do I stay motivated? You're not going to ever message me that again. Okay, so what, there's two things I want, I want you, three things I want you to do, then I'm going to hand it to Mike. Okay, I want you to pick a specific action that you need or want to do that you've been putting off due to so-called lack of motivation. Okay, this could include anything trading related, lifestyle changes, uncomfortable but necessary conversations, anything. Okay, that's your first thing. The second thing is I want you to think about what has this lack of action cost you in the past? And then the third thing is, what is it going to cost you in the present and in the future if you don't change anything? Like, what are you losing out on by not taking action? What are you gaining from not taking action? 
Okay, what are you sacrificing? What are you giving up? And these are the, the, the things you want to include is like mental, emotional, physical, financial, spiritual, romantic, right? Social. They're the things that I want you guys to consider when you ask, how do I stay motivated? Mikey, what do you got? I want everybody to delete the word motivation and replace it with desire. Instead of thinking about the word motivation, think about it as, again, desire. Do you guys think that an alcoholic needs motivation to drink? No, because an alcoholic or somebody that likes to drink understands the desired outcome. A smoker has a desired outcome. The term motivation and the lack of it implies that it's not there. Remember when I was talking about, and I bring this up in, you know, many different times, that four-year-old kid, I, I, I need to find a better way to explain that, that metaphor of um, we have a very immature version of us that can very easily take control because what the immature version of us wants to do is watch Netflix over Go Live. It wants to drink soda over water. It wants to have a cheeseburger over salad. It want you, you guys know what I'm talking about. It wants to do the things that we want to do, that the, the, the desire to do those things. And then again, the discipline to either not do them or the lack of discipline to indulge. Remember when I say this, guys, too much pleasure is pain. Too much pain is pleasure. When we pay the price over and over and over and over, the universe inevitably at some point compensates. What happens, guys, when you indulge? What I, I don't need to ask what vice all of you guys have. If it's drinking, if it's smoking, smoking weed, harder drugs, watching too much TV, uh, social media, dopamine, whatever it is, I don't care. Have you guys ever experienced, you know, uh, indulgence so long to where you feel like an alcoholic way, like indulging in alcohol results in a hangover or too much. Right. And then you wake up the next day and you face the consequence of a hangover. Right. Think about that in terms of too much pleasure, too much, too much, too much, too much. And then therefore you're going to pay for it. Right. That's why the universal law of polarity is my favorite. Because when you actively do things that absolutely you would much rather be doing something. Like, would you rather watch Netflix or watch Go Live? You're lying. You're lying if you say Go Live. I don't care who anybody is. Why? Because Go Live, or I'm sorry, Netflix or Hulu or whatever, it's the path of least resistance. It doesn't require anything. It's easier. You could just lay under a blanket and just turn your brain off. That's why I'm saying it's not about, it. Uh, you know, like, oh, no, 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 I want to push myself. No, no, no. I'm saying that it is water flows downhill, not uphill. Going uphill in this metaphor here is challenging yourself, challenging your beliefs, learning new things, going uphill. Going downhill is indulgence, pleasure and pain. In life, guys, we learn nothing through pleasure. Nothing. What have you guys learned through pleasure? How did you learn to not touch fire? How did you learn to not lie? How did you learn to, you know, not cheat? In some way, shape, or form, a punishment was there. But that's not the the point that I wanted to make with that. What, in my opinion, motivation, the word motivation, a.k.a. desire. We are habitual human beings. We love habits. We have addictions. Everyone, every single one of us is addicted. All human beings are addicted to something. You can call them a good habit. You can call them a bad habit. You can call it whatever. I don't care what you want to call it. We are addicted to whatever it is that we are addicted to. In the sense of 
how that shifts because if an alcoholic wanted to recover from alcoholism, you do not just learn to not be addicted. We transfer addiction. You move it to something else. That's the secret of like what alcoholic and AA or any of that is. You stop smoking by starting to chew gum. You stop drinking alcohol because you drink water or whatever. You know, again, we transfer. But the point that I wanted to put here in terms of motivation. Oh, and by the way, the idea of always staying motivated is bullshit. You do get hit down. Shit does suck. Shit happens. You're not going to always be motivated. So the first of all, the idea is ridiculous. That is not, it's not how anything works. The ocean pushes and pulls. Everything goes up and down. There is no constant one-way state. But again, when it comes to pain, if your brain, again, remember that immature little side of us, if it does not understand why, then it's not going to pay the price. It will talk itself out of it one way or the other. Think of, uh, here's an easy metaphor, the gym. If the person is going to the gym because yes, they want to look fit. Yes, they have the desire of losing weight or having a better looking body or whatever, but they're forcing themselves. It won't take long before the brain's like, I'm too sore. I'm too tired today. Uh, I, I, I did all this, so I'll, I'll go tomorrow, whatever, right? What any of them, any of the excuses that it only takes your brain to say, well, you know, and then you just don't go to the gym and then probably tomorrow you don't go either. And then the next day you don't go. And then just, it stops happening. Why? Because the brain, the, the immature side of us did not understand why it was a force not a desire. So when I say, why, why is it that again, why should you go through go live? Why should you challenge yourself? And that's a rhetorical question because it's again, why are you guys here? Not, oh, I just want to make more money or I want more time. That's not enough. It's absolutely not enough. We have to stop coming from a place of scarcity because so many people come from a place of scarcity of, I, oh, I want more money or I want more time or I want to help mom or I want to help dad and, and I want to help my kids or whatever. That is, again, starting from a place of scarcity and not enough. And so all we're trying to do is meet that need. What I'm asking is assume that's not a problem. Mom and dad and the kids or whatever are taken care of. You do have the car you want. You do have the clothes you want. You have those things. What do you do with the resources and the time that you get, that you have? Why? What do you like? What do you want? For me, it's music and gaming. Why do I do what I want to do here? Let me paint the picture. If you've never heard it, I would love a yacht. I would love a yacht. I think yachts are dope. And I want to have a music studio that's also a gaming setup as well. But I want to be able to play the drums in a music studio that could record, that could produce, that could do everything. And then I want a red button on the right side of me, not the left side of me, the right side of me. And I want to be able to hit it. And then the ceiling opens up and then the drum set, because I'm a drummer, I want the drum set to lift up to the dock of the boat. And I want to be able to play drums in crystal blue water. And then when I'm tired or sore, I can just dive into crystal blue water. That's what I want, you know, and it's not just the yacht or the, you know, it, it's just, again, the universe works in details. If you just say, as an example, oh, I want a Lamborghini. And that, and that is literally as far as it's ever gone for you. What kind of Lamborghini? An Aventador? A Murcielago? What color? What kind of rims are on it? What's the interior look like? What does it sound like when you start it up? What is the, you know, the sound system inside the car? Do you even know? How can the universe, like, or even more importantly, why would the, like, how can that even be answered? Or like, I want a Lamborghini. What does that mean? You see what I'm saying? If we cannot quantify why, why are, if you do not know why you're here, if you showed up and you don't, don't bother going to the chat or anything, if you're only here on, like, 
in this Zoom call as an example, because you feel that that's what you need to do, this isn't going to work for you, period. Just straight up point blank. Because people will convince themselves, oh, I'm on a Zoom call because that's what I need to do because that's just kind of like the, the perception that I've gathered. And I'm, I'm hoping that at some point it just all this all of this just works out, LOL. That's pretty much what it boils down to. There is a purpose and a reason for these calls. It's not because me and SJ just want to talk to you guys and lecture you guys. It's because if we are in the interest, if the interest is to legitimately grow and learn, well, one of the most important questions of this, uh, this quote unquote lack of motivation is that, let me ask you, if you do not know what you're passionate about, and I've, I've said this a thousand times, if you cannot answer it right now off the top of your head immediately, then you don't know what it is, and therefore, you're a slave to money. Because that's all we've ever been taught to do, is just make money and to pay bills, because that's what we've been taught to do, LOL. We don't know why. Even if we had a bunch of money, we wouldn't even know what the hell we would do with it. How or why would the universe answer you? You don't even know what it is that you want. When people say, oh, I want more money. Okay, well, if you find a dollar bill on the ground, by definition, the universe answered you. You never specified how much more money. You just said, I want to make more money. You see what I'm saying? If you yourself don't even know, then how the hell can you even have the question answered for you? And so to me... It is not, well, coming back again to the point of the question, it's not a lack of motivation. It is a lack of desire. If you don't even know why you're here, why you're doing this, then what do you think is going to happen? Oh, trading's too hard. The, oh, oh, I have to pay a subscription or I have to do this, blah, blah, blah. One way or the other, your brain's going to talk itself out of it. And then what happens? We end up back at a job and clocking in and doing the same thing and bitching about the same problems with the same people. Drifting, hypnotic rhythm, outwitting the devil, anyone? You know what I'm talking about. It's familiar. It's what we know. Misery loves its company. It is so much easier to be negative and to bitch about things, right? Okay, well, if, again, you don't understand why you're here, and that's why I always say, like, I hate the cliched word, your why, because nine times out of ten, it's family. More money or more time. That's usually what it is. The entire premise of those answers is from the point that I don't have that. And that's all I'm going for. But if, again, you got there, it's like a, it's like a dog that is chasing something. And then when it finally gets it, it doesn't even know what the hell to do with it. You have to be, as, again, the immature little four-year-old side of our brain, it, not, you know, not the you I'm speaking to, because, of course, you understand, you know, the version of you that I'm speaking to right now, you understand what is the potential here and what can happen with trading. I'm not talking about that version of you. I'm talking about the subconscious version of you, the one that is a thousand times more powerful than the version of you I'm speaking to. If it does not understand why, then it won't do it one way or the other. But if you do understand the desire, the destination, the finish line, what do I get out of it? That's the question that the little immature version of our brain is. What do I get out of it? I'd rather watch Netflix, but why should I get on Go Live? And if you cannot mentally answer that question to yourself, then your brain's going to be like, ah, yeah, there's a new season of X, Y, Z. I'd rather, you know, I'll do that. I'll watch the recording. I'll do and probably don't even you, you see you guys see what I'm talking about. We've done it a billion times in our lives, all of us. So not the lack of motivation, but the understanding of desire. Think of it as an addiction. If you could transfer or change the list of priorities of. uh like the desire to feel good, like alcohol or, you know, weed or whatever. And then that gets transferred to, I'm going to make these, the, I'm going to pay the price, so to speak, of doing the things that I would rather not do. I know I need to do them, 
but I would rather, again, not even put clothes on and be under a blanket all day. Instead of doing what I want to do, I'll do what I need to do. That is what I call the currency of the universe. When you pay to the when you when you pay the price over and 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 people again think that it, it's like oh well I've, I I got on I got on you know this Zoom call today I got on that go live earlier why am I not profitable in the markets? That's almost literally the as funny as that might sound. The irony is that it's true. People will think, well, I went through, you know, the basics. I went through the academy. Why do I not have, why do I, why am I not driving to the Lamborghini dealership right now? This is a scam. It's crazy, right? But again, by understanding the desired outcome beyond a, from a point of scarcity, but from a point of abundance, there is no lack in that regard. What would you do? I don't care what it is. It's what puts a smile on your guys' face. What makes you happy? And honestly, most people that I've ever come into contact with don't even know. And that is so, like, honestly, I challenge you guys. You know, talk to somebody in your family or talk to, you know, who just, you know, somebody else and ask them that question. If, again, it is not an immediate without hesitation response, they, in my opinion, they don't even know why it is they get out of bed other than, oh, well, I've been taught that I need to have a job and I need to make money to pay bills. That is slavery. Is that not? Isn't that by definition slavery to the monetary system? And, that it, and if that is the case, because I've always made that point, there are more slaves right now in the world than any other point in human history. Because we don't even know why. It's just because that's all we've ever been taught to do. Like, I understand again, well, no, 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 Mike, I need to do it because I need to make money to feed myself, to, you know, have an electric, you know, to pay bills or whatever. <laughs> yes, of course. That's not, again, you know, <laughs> I, I understand that answer. But that is, again, just coming from I'm just trying to meet months in. I'm just trying to reach the... Um, uh, the threshold or whatever. It is not about like what trading is. Wealth creation. That's what I always call it. People, guys, I can't tell you how many times I've, you know, talked to people that are literally getting into trades to close them, to withdraw, to pay their insurance. That is not what trading is for. Trading is not about paying bills that jobs are for trading to what well, like do you guys honestly think that the professional traders out there in the world are tr getting into whatever trades on whatever platform on whatever asset on whatever time frame are doing that to pay bills you're kidding yourself i'm not saying that bills aren't important or that they're you know whatever but the point is, is that again that's not what this is and so my entire point of this is that if we don't understand how or why it is that we're doing what it is that we're doing, what we're attempting, what we're, you know, pushing ourselves through, then why the hell are you even here? You might as well, again, go to sleep right now and wake up tomorrow and put the uniform on and go clock in somewhere and be told what to do, what to say, what days off when you can eat, right? And, and it, that's not like an insult or anything. I'm just trying to demonstrate that human beings and all of us just as humanity, as a, as a huge problem, all we have been taught to do is to survive. That's it. We have to worry about our next meal. We have to worry about feeding ourselves. We have to worry about you know having a rainy day fund. We have to worry about all of these things. When has it ever been from a point of, no, 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 what's operate from a point that those things are taking care of. You know how, like, think about that. How foreign of an idea is that? How, like, unknown would that be, right? Because no, how many people actually get to experience that? But that's my point, is that even if all of those things were answered to you, if you don't even know why, then in my, if, if let, let me put it this way. If I was the universe and I was watching you or whatever, 
why would I give you what, why would I give you money or time? You, what would you do with it? You do, if you don't even know next, right? Wouldn't you? The person doesn't even know themselves what they want. It's like Santa Claus. Hey, what do you want for Christmas? I don't know. <laughs> you see what, like, it's just, it's preposterous. So it's never a conversation about motivation. It's desire. And if we, again, don't understand why, then you don't understand why you're doing it. And that therefore the desire or motivation, of course, won't be there. You'll be more motivated to get off of a call like this. So you could start drinking. Mm. That's I mean, and like we're all humans, right? You're ready to get off of this. So, you know, you can go to sleep or watch a shower or watch porn or get drunk or smoke or you, like whatever. Right. We all know what I'm talking about. And it's again, like, because you're desiring what's going to happen after this call, as opposed to not that we have to be on something like this, we get to, but that reframing of that, of I have to versus I get to, that's not easy, but how it's done in my opinion is understanding why you have to trick your brain, so to speak into, no, 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 I can't miss these things. I, I have to do these things because they will get me to the desire that I'm wanting. You see, you guys see what I mean? Go ahead. You, something you said before about, um, literally just then about if you, like if the universe was looking at you and you don't say what it is that you want and you're specific reminds me of this dating thing I saw. And it was like, would you date you? Mm. You're this piece of shit sitting at home. Would you date you? <laughs> that like even like not even from a dating standpoint but it just make that one little statement there just makes you really look at yourself and how would you be friends with you yeah not even date just would you interact and if you're honest with yourself you're so right SJ. that's a good way of putting it like mm. absolutely yeah look at yourselves guys <laughs> powerful stuff i think tonight was like simple topics but also extremely profound um I, I learned a lot listening from mike tonight so the, like so many blue wolves as well so mike thank you for tonight go to bed if that's what you're doing i don't know what you're absolutely doing. Oh, my internet is not very good i don't know if i'm going to go back home or if i'm gonna stay here uh, i'm not sure yet amazing amazing well guys we'll see you next week thank you all for your time the recording will for this call specific call will be up next week um, not in the next couple of days, just so you know. But guys, really love tonight's call. Really important topics. Th Patty's got three pages of knowledge. What are you mm. going to do with that knowledge? <laughs> uh, first timers, thank you for being here. This happens every single Wednesday at the same time. So we'll see you next week. Same link. Mike, once again, thank you everyone for staying on. Thank you. If you know, if if you know anyone that should be on these calls, if you're benefiting from them, and you know you've got a friend and I am that should be on these calls, invite them on. Okay. Like this is what Mike and I have been doing them for so many years now because they do truly help people and it keeps people in the game longer because it helps you think how a professional trader should be thinking. Okay. So I really love doing them. Like Me I said too. in the chat before, you know, Mike and I, the reason we run these is because this is shit we wish we were taught on our journey. Like, Someone said to us the other day that we're literally the cheat codes for you guys. If that's what we can be, then fuck yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. This is, this is not a popularity contest for us. It's not that I want to be on camera. The idea is that you guys take this information and then you give it to the next generation. That y'all are the me and SJ doing it to the next generation like a fractal. This is not mine. This is not SJ's. This is just we've only been here longer. There's nothing special or anything. We've just been here a little bit longer and stay committed. What, what what do you guys think happens when you stay committed and stick to the same thing? You guys are in these seats, mm -hmm. not because of like, oh, look at us, look at us. Like, fuck all that. It's like, this is how this works. Yeah. You will be in these seats, giving this information to people who are desiring it. Not because, oh, you just know somebody who needs to be on these calls. They get to be on these calls yeah i get to be on these calls i get to be i on always appreciate you i always appreciate your guys's time 
the fact that you guys are willing to sit here and to listen, even if you take one sentence away, mm-hmm. that's that's what the that and then it is absolutely worth it because that's why we're here, right? And this is not like up oh, time for the same weekly call. No, bring the challenges, mm-hmm. bring the objections, be willing to challenge what I say what sj says because if you just oh well mike said it so therefore it must be true that is the same problem as saying well oh the government says it so therefore it must be true or the history books say it so therefore it must be true like no it's by challenging information in a way not to just like argue or be argumentative but to be intellectually honest i'm struggling with this i my brain needs to understand this not say oh yeah this really helps and when you really don't mean it and i'm not saying that anybody does but that's what these are for guys uh, but and that's why again i appreciate y'all's time way more than i promise you you appreciate my time <laughs> touche love you all have a beautiful night have a good day if you're just starting it and i'll see you soon love you Bye. guys